Today's story is Belinda Bragg in the World's Worst Parent series. Bella was a little girl with a big problem, her mother. Belinda saw her daughter, Bella, as a miniature version of her. Belinda would do the little girl's hair in a huge do like hers, dress her up in a bright pink dress just like hers, and even put a string and pearls on her, just like hers. Poor Bella ended up looking like a mini mum. In fact, if you looked at the pair with Belinda standing a few paces behind Bella, you might think they were identical. The problem was that Bella didn't want to be like her mother. She wanted to be herself. As soon as her mother's back was turned, she shut her hair, pulled off her paws and whipped off the dress to reveal a t-shirt and denim shorts underneath. Now that Bella looked like herself, Bella felt like herself. Despite being sent to the poshest girls' school in the country, Lady Haughty School for Young Ladies, Bella loved doing things like standing in puddles, making mud pies, climbing trees, running through tall grass, digging for worms, playing conkers, chasing pigeons, skimming stones, rolling down hills, being dragged through a hedge backwards. Every afternoon, when Bella trudged out of Haughty School, she would go bright red with embarrassment at seeing what her mother had on that day. A fake fur coat in the height of the summer. Sparkly diamond earrings with gems so big and heavy, her earlobes dropped down to her bottom. Designer sunglasses spotted with rubies. A ball gown with a train as long as a football pitch. A, a mock crocodile skin handbag over her wrist that was so large you could fit an actual crocodile in it. Oh, mum, no, thought the girl as she paced nearer and nearer to the school gates. Bella could hear her mother holding court with all the other parents, waiting for their little princess, Belinda, would brag and brag and brag. For each day of the week, she would make up some fresh nonsense. I took my Bella out of sports day because I didn't feel it was fair on all your girls. I am sorry to say my Bella would win every single race. She boasted on Monday. Mum! bawled Bella, desperate for her to stop, going as red as a tomato. My Bella is only 12, but all the teachers say she is a genius. She could go straight to university, but it just wouldn't be fair on the students there. She would show them all up. Belinda boasted on Tuesday. No, stop, pleaded her daughter, going as red as her postbox. In the school pantomime, I know they wanted my Bella to play every single role, but I said to her, the dra drama mistress, no, please, 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 give the other much less talented children a chance, was Wednesday's boast. Please, mum, no. Of course, my Bella can speak a hundred languages. She can even speak languages that haven't been invented yet. This was on Thursday. Mum, this is so embarrassing. Bella was now going as red as a red ant. But Belinda has saved the worst until last. Step forward. Friday. It's not easy for my Bella being by far the most beautiful girl in the school. Everyone says she gets it from her mother, but that's not for me to say. But she does. I am so desperately sad that all your little girls are such monsters. Have you ever thought of sending them to a school with paper bags over their heads? It might help them feel better. Poor hideous little wretches. Enough, en enough, exclaimed Bella. Her face was now as bright red as a London bus. So far, so bad. Until one day, a girl arrived at Haughty School with a mother even worse than Belinda. Yes, the possible, the impossible became true. The mother's name was Camilla Crow, and she never ever stopped crowing about her daughter, Carol. It was strange, as Carol was the most gormless girl you could ever meet. She never spoke unless in grunts. Huh? Carol seemed content to spend the entire day either picking her nose or scratching her bottom. That was as thrilling as life got for Carol, but by but... But, 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 if you listen to her mother, then oh my goodness, 
this nose-picking, bottom-scratching little grunter was a living legend. According to Camilla, her daughter Carol had been an Olympic gold medal winning gymnast when she still was a baby, made the record books at the youngest best-selling author who pu- published an autobiography at the age of four called Little Me or My Big Dreams, suddenly ha- single-handedly saved the Amazon rainforest by releasing a charity single called We on a Tree. Built her own rocket and zoomed to Mars, but forgot to take any pictures while she was there. Invented a new kind of fruit that she called the Binka Dinky Dudley Berry. Made world peace a reality at last, though sadly for only one minute. Taught her goldfish to play Scrabble. Made a model of the Eiffel Tower out of matchsticks which was exactly the same height as the real Eiffel Tower, learned to juggle 17 gerbils at once, invented the flop flip, a revolutionary new flip flop that flops before it flips, translated all the Harry Potter books into Chinese and then back again into English, won first prize in a bottom scratching competition. Only the last one seemed likely still, that didn't stop Camilla Crow crowing at the school gates every afternoon about her carol. Bella felt sorry for Carol. Carol's mother was even worse than hers. It soon became a war of the mothers. Carol Crow's crowing enraged Belinda Bragg. The pair became locked in a battle, a battle to outdo one another with boasts about their daughters. One afternoon, as the girls were all pouring out of school, Things turned ugly. It all started when Belinda began with, on the school trip to the zoo, my Bella saved her entire class from being eaten by a hungry crocodile. Fortunately, my daughter distracted the beast by reciting some poetry in ancient Greek. Camilla was not to be outdone. She fired back with, that's nothing. Just the other day, a grizzly bear burst into the playground. Luckily, Mike Howell wrestled it to the ground with just one hand before it could take a bite out of the headmistress. All their two daughters could do was stop and stare in horror with what was unfolding ahead. Your Carol couldn't wrestle a grizzly bear, sneered Belinda. Why ever not, snapped Camilla, because your gormless girl is far too busy picking her nose and scratching her. And I hate to say this, I am a lady of class and distinction, her behind region. I think she means you, muttered Bella to Carol. How dare you, exclaimed Camilla. My Carol has never scratched her bottom in her life. Huh, grunted Carol, which Bella took to mean, yes, I have, you muppet. All that vile little thing does from picking her nose to scratching her uh, um, bottom. All right, I admit it, but at least my Carol uses different hands for each task, unlike your disgusting little daughter who uses the same one. Disgusting! Ouch! hissed Bella to Carol. That was a low blow from your mum. True, though. Huh, agreed the gormless girl. The two mothers were now nose job to nose job. Grr! Come on, said Bella. We'd better drag our mothers away before a brawl breaks out. Carol shrugged. Huh? So, Bella grabbed her mum's hand. Come along now, mother. And Carol grabbed her mum's hand. Huh? Then, they dragged them off in opposite directions towards their Rolls Royce. The Braggs family had an electric blue Rolls Royce. But the Crow family had an even more revolting one in a shocking shade of pink. Then the two mothers raced each other along the roads back home. Once at their respective country houses, Belinda and Camilla could seethe in peace. And seethe they did. They seethed all afternoon. They seethed all evening. And they seethed through the night. By the morning, they were seething more than ever. Bad luck that it was Haughty School Sports Day, a once, year, a once yearly occasion 
when all the parents spent an afternoon cheering on their daughters in running races and the like. Of course, winning meant infinitely more to parents than it did to the girls. Lady Haughty School for Young Ladies, Sports Day! The first event of the afternoon was the hurdles. Belinda Bragg and Camilla Crow bustled into the places at the finish line, treating Sports Day like a fashion parade. Belinda was in a lime green dress and Camilla in a luminous yellow one. Seething more than ever, the pair lowered their sunglasses to shoot each other evil stares. Meanwhile, their daughters took their places at the start line with the others, more eager-looking girls. Bella couldn't give a stuff about winning. She knew she wasn't the fastest or the strongest and didn't mind one bit. The girl was good at other things, like standing in puddles. You can win this, Bella, called out Belinda. No, I can't, but whatever, she called back. Do it for Mama. Now I really want to come last, the girl muttered to herself. Beat them, Carol, bored Camilla. Beat them all, show them that. You are the best of the best. They must bow before the knight and majesty of Miss Crow Carol. Huh? grunted Carol, who was actually facing the wrong way. Bang! went the starting pistol as all the other girls raced off. Bella and Carol were immediately joint last. Neither picked up enough speed to leap over the first hurdle. So, clunk, clunk, they just knocked over them instead. And the next one, clunk, clunk. And the next one, clunk, clunk. Both warring mothers looked as if they were going to explode with rage. Carol, move your blasted bottom. But neither girl did. In fact, Bella became bis- distracted by something on the ground. Look, she exclaimed, a worm. She picked up the wiggly, waggly thing before waving it under Carol's nose. Huh? said Carol, which Bella took to the took to mean, I like your worm. The girl then picked her nose and wiped the bogey on a hurdle. Your Bella is ruining it for my Carol with her revolting worm, bellowed Camilla. Your Carol is distracting my Bella by her picking a particularly large booger, bawled Belinda. Well, you would know about big boogers because you look like one. Camilla had a point. Belinda's dress was bogey green. I've had quite enough of you, Belinda Bragg. And I've had quite enough of you, Camilla Crow. With that, Belinda Bragg stomped over to the pole vault and seized one of the long poles. Meanwhile, Camilla snatched a javelin. In no time, the pair were locked in a deadly duel. Take that, snarled Belinda, swooshing her pole. Take this, snapped Camilla, swishing her javelin. Clank, clank, clonk, went the weapons as they bashed together. Belinda yanked up her pole, hitting some of the other parents on their heads as she did so. Clonk, donk, bonk, out, out, owie. Meanwhile, wrenching back her javelin, Camilla managed to whack all the others. Thwack, 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 ah, ow, uh. Soon, all the posh parents were arming themselves to join in the fight. Everything on the sports field became a weapon. Shot puts, discuses, even sand from the long jump was thrown into people's faces. At one point, the haughty school headmistress herself, Miss Prunella Prim, was hoisted up by some of the mothers and used as a battering ram against the cowering huddle of fathers. The school sports day had a descended into a gladiator battle. It was a posh parent against posh parent, and they fought dirty. There was hair pulling, leg scratching, arm pinching, finger bending, nose yanking, toe stamping, eye poking, ear flicking, elbow tickling, head locking, even bottom bite, bottom biting. Uh, ah, ow, oh, boom, pow, crunch. Soon. The playing field was a swirling mass of gruesome grown-ups. 
The girls all stared open-mouthed in shock as their parents bashed and bored at each other. Your daughter has a work wonky fringe. Your daughter looks like a guinea pig. Your daughter stinks of turnips. Still, holding the woman, Bella shouted over the din. Holding the worm, Bella shouted over the din. Girls, who thinks our mums and dads are a bunch of fruitcakes? The girls all cheered in agreement. Hurrah! None cheered louder than sisters, Sophie and Anna, whose mother was yanking the nostril hair of one of the fathers. Ah! So, who fancies bunking off sports day and being dragged through a hedge backwards instead? Called out Bella. This was the girl's second favourite thing. After standing in a puddle, of course. Yes, cried all the other girls, except Carol. Carol grunted, huh, which Bella took to mean yes. In no time, the girls were having a whale of a time, laughing, joking, climbing trees, skipping through fields and making up games. And best of all, picking their noses and scratching their bottoms to their heart's content preferably with the same hand. The girls were being happy being themselves with their parents made while their parents made absolute fools of themselves. Thanks for listening.